God worked that out, didn't he? Yes. Amen. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming this morning. And uh, I got, got a little preface to this lesson this morning. Uh, Tanya was teaching last Sunday. I had a thought come upon my heart. And I thought, well, you know how sometimes scripture just kind of jumps out to you. I'm like, how about that? Well, she started teaching Sunday. I thought, well, she's going to get right on that. That's good. I want to hear what she has to say for me. Well, she stopped <laughs> before she got there. I thought, hmm, well, the way that is. So I wondered all day Sunday. I thought, I thought about it. And then Tom preached Sunday night. And I thought, oh, oh that's sort of down what? But the Lord kind of gave me a thought. And then I knew something was going to happen, Monday. <laughs> I just knew. I got a message, Facebook messenger. Jeff, can you teach Sunday? <laughs> I knew she was going to do that. I knew she was going to do that, but it's God's plan. Yes. Amen. Uh, never taught a lesson like this before. Glad she's here because I, I just never have. I've taught some Sunday school before, and of course I've taught a little bit down here, but I'm just an assistant. But it's, it's a tough message. And it's for me, but it's also for every one of you. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I knew she was going to call, so I, I thought, well, I'll get my Sunday school books, Mike. I'll find some. Well, I went through five different lessons. Ain't nothing. I'm stuck. So, Judy, I'm right back here. Where God I had kind of laid on my heart last Sunday. Where we are. So, this must be it. And I told him this week, I'll do it. I'll do it. So here we go. Okay, so fast your seatbelts. Here we go. And it's found in Philippians, the third chapter. And those who get your Bibles, get your Bibles out. Philippians, third chapter, and starting with verse 13. That's almost where she left off. She left off a little before then because there's, there's some lessons on this in uh, verses 11 and 12. But hopefully I didn't get on her lesson here, but... This is what the Lord shows. So, Philippians, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 13. And it says, Brother, I count myself to be content, but all the things I do, I dwell on the things that I have done. And satisfied with my walk with Jesus, I sit on my seat and wait for something else to do, for someone else to do something. Because I paid my dues, and I hope I make it to heaven. <laughs> Did you follow that? That's the new version. That's the new version. Yeah. Well, I think that's the version sometimes we use. Yeah. Didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't say that. It says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Now, apprehended means, in the Greek, to take eagerly, to seize, to possess, attain, come upon, comprehend, find, obtain, perceive, and overtake. That's just all that means, to be apprehended. But this one thing I do, Paul says, one thing, he's just doing one thing here, forgetting. Now, what's the Greek mean? Forgetting? Forget? Or neglect? Right? So, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching. And reaching. Now, reaching in the Greek means to stretch oneself forward. To reach forward. Now, there's different ways to reach, right? Yeah. It Kleenex, reach down and get the Kleenex. No big deal. But there's some things, Roger, to reach for, you've got to stretch forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got to put some effort forth. Yeah. Right? To reach, really reach out. I mean, we've all done that on our tippy toes and all those small over. To reach really straight and get something. Yeah. Uh, to reach out. That's what we're talking about here. To stretch oneself forward. Really reach out. Forth unto those things which are before. I press. Now we've heard this all preached before in yes. this lesson here. 
I press, press in the Greek to pursue, to follow after, given to, to press forward. It's an action. It's an effort. It's something we really got to strive for, to press for. Right? And to those things which are before, I press to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What a verse here. What a verse. Now, now that we've got that, the new version and the real version settled, we, you know, this is something that we all need to apply. Now, this, this lesson is certainly for everyone. It's certainly for everyone. But I think it really applies to us, the senior adult class. Because what Paul goes on to say here. Now, we may wind up quick, that's fine, but there's really a point that the Lord really wants us to get to. And verse 15 says, it says, Let us therefore, after we've done all these other things, verse 13 and 14, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So glad that God's Holy Spirit can reveal things unto us yes. that we need to do. Yes. My goodness, where would I be if he didn't do that today? Right, yeah. It'd just be awful. We'd be, and we'd be running around just like in the barn, yeah. not knowing what to do, which way to go. But God impresses upon us with his Holy Spirit what we need to do. And if we listen, yeah. we'll be blessed. Yeah. We'll be like-minded, like he said, to be perfect, be thus minded, to follow him in his spirit. Verse 16, Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Verse 17 is where the meat is today, and where it is for us senior adults. I think the senior adult class is top of heat. Not just because we're part of it. But I, I, there's something special about the senior adult class that I want to try to get out today. That I don't think we really realize, and I think this is what God really wants us to understand. Is it says, Brethren, in verse 17, Brethren, be ye followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as you have us for an example. The senior adult class today. Each and every one of us in this room is an example yes. to this church. Amen. An important example to this church that we have to take serious. Um, it's really woke me up, and I hope it wakes you guys up. That's why I think it's pretty hard for me to do this, because it's kind of getting on our toes. We're important. Yes. You guys might think we're not. Yes. That we just come in here and said, but this adult class is so important to this church. So important to this church. Because we need to be an example. Amen. Amen. We need to be an example for ourselves, for one another. Yes. We need an example for the youth of this church. Yes. For the, the young couples. Because all of us can remember we were young couples. Yeah, right. Way back. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that what, what, what did we take away from those people? The older adults. It's an example right. that they set. Right. It's how they performed in the church. How they lived their lives, right? right. That's us now. Yeah. We need yeah. to wake up and understand right. that. Yes. Yeah. So, there, there's people that all of you can... All of you guys can uh, think of examples of people that you admire or you looked at. You know, you think, well, I like that person, what they did, or I really trust them, or I have a lot of confidence in them, right? Even, even not in church, maybe in the workplace or, or just friends or whatever, there's, there's people that's touched our lives, <coughs> in our lives, that really made a difference to us. And you can think of the, there's good examples. I, and I wrote some down and and uh, Judy and I know Teddy Holbrook sat in front of us. I don't know. I mean, they just stomp that foot every once 
Islam. It's not all Islam. Don Bacon, Haster, Don Tackett, Ezra, and Cleo Tears. It's just some of just the name of them. But there's also a few James Ray, this guy sitting right here, Fred. Yeah. Russell Lee Scott, Don Humble, Roy Willis, Raymond Lewis. There's others, preachers or whatever, that's come out that you think, wow. Yeah. You know, I, Ray, I use Raymond Lewis in the sense that, man, he's the ever ready bunny cracking yeah. wide open. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah. Yeah. that guy is not something. Yeah. Yeah. Then, now, we all can't be like Raymond Lewis. You know, I'm not right. saying that, but they're just people that <laughs> kind of stick out. Yeah. yeah. In your mind, Russell Lee Scott. Some of you guys remember him. Wow, he was wow, we guy. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was different. Yeah, but he was something else. Yeah, even the spirit of God. Yeah, some. But anyway, there's people that really impressed upon us. That's us. That's his class. That's what we need to be. So, what kind of example are we set? What kind of example am I set? I mean, uh, this is this is this is for me. I'm, I'm just not not saying to get on somebody. But what impresses about those individuals so much? One is their steadfastness. Yeah. Now we can be an example by just coming to church, being in that seat, and praising God. I think of Tom Brown's used the example of his mom. You know, I didn't. We didn't come down here this much before we come down here to be in service, and we come revivals and stuff. And I'm sure I was in service. With I don't remember that. Yeah. But he said that she was always a quiet individual. Cry. Yes. Amen. But no longer I've been in church since 30 some years or whatever. I remember there's a difference in services today. And our pastor, Sunday night, kind of preached on that. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. He's worried about us getting stale. I remember testimonies. Every service, every service that we had one or two, there'd be testimonies. One or two, maybe three or four, maybe just one. But there's a voice of testimony. You know who testified the most? Seniors. So how are we doing? Not good. How are we doing our testimonies? How am I doing on my testimony? Not good. Not good. I am. And the unashamed of the gospel and the temple about showing the goodness of God. Didn't get up to testify about going to Walmart. Man, that person shoved that cart in my cart. I'll tell you what, I cracked her head. No, that's not what the testimony is about. Amen. It's about how Jesus is. Yes. Yes. What he's done for us. Yes. Amen. And I've got some more examples I'm going to share with you. One of them sitting back there. <clears throat> Diane Newton. Yeah. Diane Coe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, that's what Edmund said. <laughs> <laughs> she don't know it, but when I got saved, of course I got a little background music, whatever, played the note, got to church, and I'm like, man, she ain't using no notes. I should doing that. She's got some magical power or something. But I gleaned some information off of her. She was a witness to me. Yeah. A help, an example. Right? Esther Ruth at Smith Chapel. Play all them games, just look around. Played them a million times. Got gleaned some off of that. Tom Brown. Whew, he's helped me a lot. Didn't even know. It. I just get to sit up there once in a while in the park and I'm like this, you can see me up there. And I even play some back on the computer and say, how's he, how's he do that? And an example. Yeah. And they're, they've been, example. Diane and S. Ruth and Tom has been an example to me, not even knowing yeah. that they're an example. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, how is my example or how is your example not even knowing? So what are people gleaning from us today? What's people gleaning from me today? Think about that. Uh, how that example changed my life. How that example can change other people's lives that we give. So, and I know uh, 
I know some people don't realize that how an example they are, but they really do. They really do. And 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 it seems like God has shared some things. And also, I, I asked Tyson today if I can use him as an example. Do you remember what he said last Sunday night in service? He got testified. He got kind of God bless. He got kind of got to testify for him. He said, "But I appreciate you seniors." He said that. He said that. I appreciate you seniors in your testimonies and stuff. That's how important we are as this class. That's how important the senior adult class is. It makes a difference. It helps this church. I'm telling you, each and every one of you guys make a difference this church. So how are we making a difference is my point, right? Uh, and then also... What about the message Tom preached Sunday night? Do you remember what his main theme was? You were sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> he preached his heart out. <clears throat> and there was crickets. That's the all call. I thought. about taking the next step. Yeah. He preached about how he's kind of worried about Beach Fork. Yeah. He made comments. Yeah. He said, uh, well, I got them written down here, but I'm fine. He said about why do we wait to a near-death experience to make a difference? He used Terry Craft. He used Brother Mike Brown. He was Cal Ray and his wife. Remember? How they seem to get closer to God. How do we, why do we wait to an experience like that to make a difference in our lives? So why don't we just go ahead and do it? Make a difference. Why don't we take that next step and do something to help each and every one of us and those around us? Now, what is that step? I don't know. Your step's going to be way different than mine. Right? But God can reveal what that step is to each and every one of us. If we'll listen. As Paul said, God shall reveal even this unto you. If we'll listen to His Holy Spirit, there is a step for each and every one of us. It's just not a step for Eddie. It's just not a step for Bob, for Debbie, Jeff. There's a step for each and every one of us. There's more that we all can do. Freddie is embodied the oldest couple here today. Have you done all you could for God in your life? His answer is no. My goodness. I thought way short of what he's done. Yes, sir. But you, I'm going to use you an example. I know you don't care. Have got up and said before, what's wrong with you people? Yeah. Yeah. Hasn't he? Yes. He's right on track. Yeah. What's wrong with us? Yeah. Now, like I said, it's not on the shout. Because Tom said it well. He said it. Worship is not for worship's sake. It's worship because we love Jesus. It's right. worship because what Jesus has done for us. Right. That's the thing. It's not just worship to get up and wave our hands and show and just jump about. That's not what it's about. Right. But we can worship better. We need to take that next step. Yeah. school class need to be the leader of that. Yes. Yeah. We do. Yeah. I do. Because yes. there's people, these young couples, as I said in the beginning of this lesson, when we were young couples, we looked upon those people. So what are they seeing in us? Right. What are they seeing in us? That's why we're important. That's that. 
repentance for each and every one of us in court. And Tom said he had a great message. Uh, it just, I wrote some of the things down and I, I just, I don't, I don't see him that God don't want them all in here. But he, he, he shared his heart about taking that next step. And the message I got out of it is, and there's been other messages that Doug's preached, and even Caleb and our great pastors here have said that they're concerned about Beach Fork. This is my church. This is Judy's church now. This is our church that we've come to. We've come for seven years. Whatever, we're, we're family. So I'm talking to us too. He's worried. And I would be too. I mean, and I'm glad he is. If he wasn't worried, then the, the church could just do whatever. But he wants the church to continue on like page four always has. Yes. Don't be afraid. That's us. It takes all of us. It takes all the classes now, you know. But we we need we need to do more. Us seniors need to do more. We just need to do more. We're the example. We're the example. Now. Yes, we've been there and done that. We have. We've been there and done that. We've all had offices to do and things to do and all that kind of stuff. But there's no time to stop. There's no time to quit. There's no time to just be even keeled. We can't just be even keeled. We, we got to take that next step. We got to do more. We, gotta, we, we, we just got to do something. If it's just raise your hand, like I say, it's going to be a personal thing. It's nothing I can tell you. You got to do. That's not for me to say. It's for God to say. God's Holy Spirit will be the one to lead us. So what's He got for me? I have no idea. But I want to take that step, whatever it is. Help me, Lord, to take that step. Help me, Lord, to take that step. Now. Uh, he said, Cal also shared today, I don't know if you watched the Adventure of Gallery thing, but Cal shared that there has to be an awakening. There has to be an awakening before people get saved. <clears throat> it's been a while. Now, we've had a few saved. Yeah, and I'm glad, thankful. But it ain't like it should be. We all got lost loved ones. I am. We got people that's going to hell. Yeah. Need to pray. Need to take that next step in our prayer life. Whatever it may be, we've got to get excited about this thing. Yeah. We've got to get serious about this thing. Amen. We just do. i got some additional scriptures I want to read because uh, we've probably got time. In 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, I want to read the first 13 verses. And you don't have to follow me. But in the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, it says, Moreover, brother, I would not that you should be ignorant, how that all of our fathers under the cloud were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock is Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye adulterers, or some of as some, as were some of them, sorry. And it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. <laughs> what a society we have today, I love just to play. Yeah. Eat and drink. That's, that's life, isn't it? Neither let us commit fortification as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for an example as they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he 
stand up. Take heed, lest you fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Point taken here, we take that next step, guess what? Man, the enemy's going to come on us. But God's better. God is stronger. God will make a way for our escape. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. It says, Let no man despise thy youth. Talking to Timothy here, Paul is. But be thou an example. Of the, of the believers in word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity want to add anything to that? wow be an example of all those things till I come give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine don't believe me. Right? Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Everyone's got one. Which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that they profit thee may appear for all. Not just to your neighbor, not just to the adult Sunday school class, but it will appear to all, this whole congregation. Whosoever will. Amen. And it says, Take heed to thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that don't know you exist. Here. That here you. That here you means I probably have to say something. And in First Peter, second chapter, twenty through twenty-five. First Peter, second chapter, twenty through twenty-five. And it says, For what glory is it if when you be buffeted in your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if, when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, bishop of your souls. And I got circled in my Bible, but committed himself. Damn. Big word. Committed. And if we take that next step, we've got to commit to it. We've got to... It, personally, that next step, Randy, will be hard. Me. Whatever it may be. I don't know that yet. But Eddie will take it. I'm going to take it. We need to take it. We need to take it for because we're an example that you don't realize that we are. This class is so one more second one more time and I'm through. We are so good. You each and every one of you guys are so important to this church. You don't realize it. Because if you think back, how we looked upon the seniors when we was younger, how they were an example for us, how we remember that example, what they know. As some examples I shared with you in my own. That's us today. So let's take that next step. Let's keep to what our pastors say. Let's use these orders. Let's testify. Let's raise our hand. Let's just cry. Let's just come to church. Let's commit to Him. Let's commit to Christ. Oh, and we'll see great things. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. And yes, let's take it with us when we go through those doors. Outside. Yeah. Absolutely.
absolutely. Absolutely. Because your husband, we've been praying for him. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I want to see him saved. Me yeah. too. Ed Bonham needs saved. Yeah. Yeah. Randy Newton needs saved. There's others I can name. I don't want to leave somebody out, but everybody's got family that needs saved. Yeah. Judy's brother, Carl Riley, Dorothy's yeah. husband, yeah. needs saved. Yeah. My brother-in-law, Dennis Thompson, <clears throat> some know. He needs saved. That's who I've been praying for, some of them. Man, we're going to get serious about this thing. Yeah. Let's be an example. Let's be an example, folks. You guys are so important. You're so important. Jeff, Jeff, a lot of things at times, too, is just taking out time to be with someone. Yes. yes. Like Mike spent some time with somebody that's not been coming for a long time. Yes. He, he just took his time and went several hours with him at the night yep. and talked. So sometimes it just takes our time, too. Yes. And any, anything that's to get to reach someone. Amen. And, that, and that's like with somebody that's sick. There's, there's, there's yes. a friend of mine I've worked with for years that's got Cancer and heart surgery and got cancer again. Yeah. Sometimes it just needs a call. Yeah. yeah. It just needs a call. We need to be there for folks. Maybe that's our next step. Maybe, you know, we could come to service in the next six months and I'm not, you're not seeing a change in me. I'm going to use me as an example. Well, Pocket didn't take his next step. Maybe I've been talking to people yeah. outside right. the church. That's right. It may not be an outpouring of showing it here at church. Right, exactly. But, but, you guys would see a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In me, if that's what I was going to use an example, you still see something. Yeah. You still see something. Let's see something in each other. Let's do something. Let's take that next step. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Done. Good job, Dan.